Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and supporting me. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> I did it again. Despite all of those ca all caps with six exclamation marks, don't forget to show your shirt. I did it again. I forgot to do it. So, I'm going to have to add this in by splicing it into the video. So here's the shirt that I have on today. You ready? My wife gave me this shirt for our 50th wedding anniversary. And now when I wear it, she says, that's no longer true, you know. <laughs> She's so sweet. Uh, July will be our 52nd wedding anniversary. So... Yeah, it's no longer true, but I don't mind wearing it. I like the shirt. It's comfortable, and I like the message that it sends. So, sorry I forgot it. I'll stick it in. The first item that I have in today's news is titled, Grandparents, You're More Influential Than You Know. You know why I had to include this one. Because <laughs> I'm a grandparent. It's an interesting article. And it talks about how grandparents can influence children, grandchildren. In general, society normalizes the slow death of the soul through obsession with comfort. I thought that was such a profound statement that I highlighted it. In general, society normalizes the slow death of the soul through obsession with comfort. The only sure way out of this hazy slumber is to recognize a higher calling. That is the drive my grandfather and grandmother find to propel them forward. This is the invitation they have accepted from their creator to stubbornly pursue the fullest of life, the most alive versions of themselves, until the end. I don't think I could have put it any better than that. Just because you're old and just because you're retired doesn't mean that you have to check out. You can still be fully involved in life, as I am. And uh, I do a lot of things that I don't talk about on my channel. Uh, I've alluded to them sometimes. And, and of course, recently I had an interruption in my channel because of the work that I do on servers on the internet. But had it not been for that interruption, you might not ever know I was doing that because I just don't talk about it. But I do a lot of things outside of YouTube, or in addition to YouTube, if you want to put it that way. And they just keep me chugging along. They keep me interested. They keep me thinking. They keep my mind working. And I think that's important when you get older to not just... Uh, you know, I think about my dad. For my dad, his job was his be-all and end-all. And when he retired, he was lost. He didn't know what to do with himself. And he was dead within five years. It's just the reality of it. If you, if, you, if you don't have interests that keep you going, then you end up withering. It's just that simple. So if you have elderly people in your life, involve, get involved with them. Call them on the phone. Talk to them. FaceTime with them. Zoom call them, you know, check on them, see how they're doing. Ask if there's anything you can do to help and ask them what they're doing to be involved in life. The second article I have is titled, Stop Telling Police They're Oppressors and Criminals, They're Victims. Well, I have to confess, I've never really thought of police as victims. But this is an interesting story and I thought I'd bring it to you. Uh, a protest outside of a synagogue in Los Angeles yesterday turned violent. The governor of California and the mayor of Los Angeles rightly condemned the violence, and we don't yet know why the police couldn't prevent the mayhem. What's clear is that our elected leaders have utterly failed to keep people in the wealthiest state in America safe from crime and violence. Consider that just a few hours earlier, criminals took over the Bay Bridge between Oakland and San Francisco to spin donuts and launch fireworks in what is known as a, a sideshow. These sideshows have become common in Oakland in recent years. 
that's because nothing is done about it. You know, human beings are human beings. If there's no consequences to their behavior, they're going to do whatever they want. And in some cases, whatever they want is going to be abusive. It's going to be illegal. It's going to be harmful to other people. But if nobody's going to stop them, if there's not going to be any consequences at all for their actions, why would they change? Experts, Governor Gavin Newsom and the mainstream news media, say there's been no increase in crime and that crime levels are lower in California than in other states. But that's a lie. One out of four people in San Francisco surveyed say they were a victim of crime last year. 42% say they were victimized more than once. And half of all crime victims say they don't bother reporting it, mainly because they don't think the police or the district attorney will do anything about it. And let's face it, they've said they won't do anything about it. So <laughs> that's not an unrealistic expectation on the part of crime victims, but it's a sad state of affairs for society. And you have to wonder, where is this all leading? At some point, at some point, it's going to get bad enough that people will take the law into their own hands. My third article today is Blaze News Investigates. Biden's illegal immigration crisis pushes nation's only right to shelter state to its breaking point. I was not even aware of this. Massachusetts' right to shelter law passed in 1983 requires the state to provide housing to all pregnant women and families with children. Wow, that's... <laughs> The state's shelter system considers children to be those under 21 years of old. The law demands that the shelter accommodations include refrigeration and basic cooking facilities. In some overflow temporary emergency shelter locations that lack such amenities, taxpayers are dishing out more funds to pay vendors to deliver food to the illegal immigrants, a WBZ February report revealed. The news outlet's investigation discovered that Massachusetts taxpayers are spending roughly $64 per day to feed each illegal immigrant. The news outlet obtained vendor contracts for a number of services, including 17 hotel and motel contracts, totaling over $116 million for fiscal year 2024, ending in June. Some of the hotels have also been contracted to provide three meals per day, WBZ reported. The state's Democratic leaders have asked the Biden administration to send more federal aid to keep up with the influx, influx of illegal aliens, but local politicians remain resistant to the idea of reforming the right to shelter law or the state's sanctuary policies. Now see, this state, Massachusetts, made a conscious decision that they were going to pay for any woman who was pregnant or any person who had a child for their housing and their food. that They made that decision, okay? And they also made a decision to be a sanctuary state for illegal aliens. Now, when they made these decisions, they never thought it was going to come to this. They never thought they would get to the point where they would just be a totally exhausted on funds. But now that they are, what's their answer? They don't want to reform the policy. They want the rest of the country to pay for it. Does that make any sense to you? Vaughn told Blaze News that the funds used to pay for the hotels that were converted into shelters were taken from a rainy day fund. It's not going to be renewed. It's not clear where they're going to get the money for 2025. Well, it isn't the job of the entire country to pay for a policy that Massachusetts consciously enacted on their own and knowing full well what the consequences were of it, but not realizing the impact that a massive influx of illegal aliens would have on their policy. So now they're, the piper has come home and they have to pay. And so they want us to pay. It's ridiculous. And finally... Four years of Anthony Fauci lies. From 2020 to the present, Dr. Fauci displayed a shocking disregard for the truth. And this is a lengthy article. 
I'm just going to read you a little bit towards the end. Uh, I've, I've talked about Fauci many times. I think he should be in jail. I think he's responsible for the deaths of millions of people. He, he, he should, maybe even he deserves the death penalty, in my opinion. Though Fauci is no longer in the political spotlight, Congress continues to showcase his lies, demonstrating how Americans were continuously fed false and misleading information during the pandemic. As the director of the NIAID, Fauci's guidance was instrumental in shaping public health policies and responses. Education leaders, public health officials, and lawmakers all took guidance from Fauci and the NIH, NIAID's parent organization, influenced decisions, influencing decisions of major institutions across the country. This is the reason why I say Fauci is responsible for this and he should he should be tried and in my opinion if he were he would be convicted and sentenced to prison for his crimes but the way things work in our country now <laughs> the likelihood of that is very low very very low so that's the news for today as always i'll put the links in the description so that you can follow up if you want to and I pray for you that you will have an abundant day and an abundant life and that God will bless you in every way possible, that God will watch over you and keep you safe from harm. I pray for the same thing for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam era vet out.